Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello adventurers and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast. This is your host Holly Wharton and this is a very special throwback Thursday episode or let's call it Into the Wood Classics. It's been ages since I re-released one of my older episodes and there's a very special reason for this one. Today I'm sharing with you episode 23 from the Socially Holistic Podcast, which was the very first name for the show. It's an episode on how to stay fit as a busy woman with the lovely Sarah Louise Fox, whose maiden name was Sarah Stafford Williams, and that's the name that appeared on this episode. This episode is all the way back from December 30th, 2013, the very first year that I was doing this podcast. And the reason that I'm releasing this episode is because the lovely Sarah suddenly and very sadly passed away a couple of weeks ago. And she's been on my mind a lot. Uh, She was a friend who I met through networking in London many years ago. Loved her, loved her energy. She was just a gorgeous human being. And I wanted to remember her by bumping up this episode for you to listen to. As I said, Sarah was just, just a lovely, lovely person and she will be missed by so many people. I really, really enjoyed our chat from back from 2013 about how to stay fit as a busy woman. And of course, that topic is just as relevant today as it was almost eight years ago when it was released. So hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Holly. Hello. Hello. And it's so great to have you here today. Thank you very much. Great to be here. I, I just think the work that you do is so, so important because so many women in business just forget about self-care and they forget about fitness mm. and they forget about keeping their bodies in shape and they just don't realize how important it is to their business to mm. stay in shape. Definitely. I mean, and it's even as a, you know, when I originally started my business, I started as a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. I was in the gym all the time with clients and I still wasn't looking after myself because I I put everyone and everything else before myself and I think especially as women we feel do feel like we have to look after everyone and everything and put ourselves at the bottom of our to-do lists and uh, you know I'm sure you have a really long to-do list yourself so the things at the bottom tend to drop off the end (laughs) um yeah but when you are your business it actually is a real risk to your business not to look after yourself Exactly. And I love how you tell that story on your website about how, as you say, you were working with clients and you were helping clients and they were losing weight and they were getting in shape and they were feeling great and they were just mm-hmm. thriving and mm-hmm. you, you were actually starting to gain weight again and it was like, what is happening? My clients are doing so well and yet I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was quite a ridiculous situation as well, as far as I was concerned because you know, I got into business because I'd lost a load of weight myself, got really passionate about fitness and, you know, how great it can make you feel. And then I started my business and, you know, just the sheer fact I was prioritizing everyone else just meant that I was going in the opposite direction to my clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it started to actually have an impact because I, you know, I started to burn out really quickly, Mm -hmm. started to get, you know, ill. And then, you know, if you can't, not actually well enough to actually see your clients, then, you know, <laughs> can't earn your money. <laughs> um, but as I went networking and met more entrepreneurial women, I realized actually so many women in business were having the same problem. And a lot of those who had kind of taken control of their health and were prioritizing it, they were doing it because they'd got sick, they'd burnt out, they'd realized they'd got diabetes or you know, something worse, you know, and so they've been forced to make time. 
Um, and it's funny when you're forced to make time, how, how you actually manage to do it after all years of saying that you haven't got the time, you know? Well, it becomes a priority, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. When it becomes urgent, yes. <laughs> it's <probably laughs> important. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, I originally, I was quite lucky, actually. My career in marketing communications was actually a thing I studied at university. Um, and I did that for about nine years after university, working for public sector and charities and those sorts of organisations. But I knew that it wasn't really what I wanted to do long term. I looked at my bosses and my directors and they were killing themselves. Mm. And even working for charities, I felt really disconnected from the people I was helping or wanted mm -hmm. to help. And so for years, I was sort of looking for something that would be more fulfilling that involved working directly with people involved helping people directly and it was you know I looked at various studying a bit of psychology and different things and then it was when I I sort of I got to this point where I had all my adult life up until the age of about 27 28 I was overweight but hadn't really sort of acknowledged it or taken responsibility for it mm -hmm. And I think it didn't really bother me, but after a while it did actually, I started to realise actually, I would go out with my friends, I would feel like the fat one, I would feel horrible, you know, I would um, go to work and be like, you know, it would affect my confidence at work, I sort of started pulling back a little bit, I started wearing black all the time, and my friends would tell you that if I'm not wearing colour, they think something's wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite a bright person, a bright bubbly person, and, you know, I, I, when I started, and I started to just feel physically heavy all the time, you know, like froggy, and my brain was fuzzy, and it didn't feel good, and I sort of realised that actually if I was going to complain about this all the time, then I needed to take responsibility for it and do something about it. And I started by sort of exercising and, and that sort of thing. Um, and I was exercising a lot, but nothing was happening. And it was when I asked for help from a personal trainer who gave me some tips on what to eat, what not to eat. That's when I really, um, the weight started coming off. I started feeling really good, really energized. And I said, oh, you know, I feel really good. This is how I can help people. This is how I can help other people to feel good. I want everyone to feel this amazing. Um, and that's when I started alongside my full-time job sitting at a desk all day, going to the gym quite a lot. And then I started studying the personal training side of things. Um, the end of my course came up quite co you know, coincidentally, just in line with a round of redundancy at work. So I mm. thought, oh, I'll give it a go, why not? But I knew that it wasn't just about the food and the exercise. It was also about the mindset. So I did some studying around coaching and mentoring and a lot of reading. Um, and... And I became really passionate about wanting to integrate the two, the practical fitness um, and nutrition side of things, as well as that mindset. Because if you haven't got the mindset down, then, you know, the other stuff just won't work in the long run. Even if you manage to hit, reach a goal, you won't necessarily be able to maintain it, which is just the same in business, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, and so it's funny, though, because I think since, although I had nine years in marketing and communications, I feel like I've learned more about marketing since I set up my business than I did in a, a nine-year career plus a three-year degree, you know. So it's quite, um, it's quite funny. Well, it's completely different, I think, when you're a solopreneur because you're marketing yeah. yourself. I mean, exactly. you're kind of the star of your business and, and it's you. It's not a company. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You suddenly think, you know, well, it's sort of rude to brag and tell everyone how, how great you are, you know, and, and that's when I started looking at the advice of different sort of, you know, thinking, okay, I'm not just what, what I provide, like the facility, but thinking about, okay, what value can I actually add to people's lives and, and thinking about the benefits I was providing to people. Um, rather than thinking, oh, I've got to talk about me, me, me all the time, because it's not about me, it's about the people I want to help. Exactly. And I think that's such an important thing to call out, because so many people that are struggling with their marketing, mm. it's because they're focusing on themselves, and they're not realizing that they need to be speaking to the people that they want to help. Yeah, definitely. And it's um, it's an easy thing to do. You slip back into your own mind, mm. kind of almost, and it's like you actually have to step out of that and think, <laughs> who do I... Who am I helping is sort of think as that person. Mm. Um, and I quite often start writing something and then completely scrap it because I think, no, I'm writing as me. I'm not writing as <laughs> yes. I want to help. Although a lot of the, the reason I want to help people is because I have been through this experience. Exactly. 
a bit different for everyone, you know? Yeah. And I think that the fact that you've been through this experience mm. really makes you so much more credible in your business. Mm. Well, definitely. I mean, a lot of the sort of the coaches and mentors I've had since I started my business, oh, and even before that, really, you know, if you know someone's been through it and they've made a change in their own life, it helps you to have confidence that they can help you exactly. to do the same or do something similar. And so it's sort of, it, it feels good to know that they've been there as well. You know, I'm not a personal trainer I was, who was, or I'm not a, men, a fitness mentor who I wasn't great at PE. I hated PE at school. You know, the <laughs> tensions I ever got was because I purposefully left my PE kit at home <laughs> so that I didn't have to do PE. You know, and I, you know, I spent a long time overweight, a long time really abusing my body, um, but not feeling like I could really do anything about it, not believing in myself, believing that I could do anything. And so I know what that's like. Mm. Um, and so I can come from that place of being like, okay, I've, I've been maybe not exactly where you are, but somewhere similar. Um, and so, you know, thinking about what I've done to get from where I was to where I am now has helped me to come up with that female warrior fitness system. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about that system. Yeah. Um, well, it's um, a process you go through, not always in the same order because everyone's a bit different. <laughs> And really a lot of it is about mindset. So alongside making the practical changes to the amount of exercise you do, the nutrition and the food you eat, um, and also the lifestyle elements like getting enough sleep, mm. you know, meditation, that sort of thing. Alongside making those changes, you're working through a number of exercises to get in the right mindset so that you can sustain it mm. um, and to do it without feeling guilty about it, you know, because um, I think people think that when I'm when they're working out or when they're taking a bit of time out to cook a meal or have a lunch break even, mm. that they're neglecting their business or neglecting someone or something, and uh, so they feel guilty about it. So even if they start, I know that I found definitely when I started with good intentions, other things would take priority because I hadn't quite made the connection between my body and my business. Mm. So. Even if I started giving it priority, it was difficult to maintain. And now, and every so often, I do go into that frantic mode, you know, when you've got a deadline or loads is happening, and mm -hmm. you think, oh, I shouldn't go to the gym or go for a run or, you know, I can't take a lunch break today. And then it, you have to stop yourself and think, okay, if I do this, actually I'll come back to my work fresher and brighter and lighter and be able to work so much more efficiently and effectively that actually I gain back that time plus more. Yes. Uh, so essentially those things are essential business activities, but, you know, the system is all about helping you make that connection and do it in a way that doesn't mean you're spending hours and hours in the gym because, you know, or, or whatever, you know, you don't need to do that. It can be time efficient. Um, but you also, it's also about helping you believe in yourself and change your beliefs about yourself and your ability to look after yourself um, and your self-worth as well. If you don't believe you deserve to be truly happy, which a lot of people don't, they might be making a lot of money, but if they don't really believe they deserve to be fully happy, they'll find another way to sabotage themselves and quite often that's with their health and it might be the one thing that someone is not really taking control of, even if they seem successful in every other area of their life. So the fitness system is about helping people to get through that and be successful in every area. I really, really love what you said about the connection between body and business, because mm -hmm. I know I go through the same thing. You know, when I've got a, a product lunch coming or I'm really, really busy with some aspect of my business, you know, I've got little alarms on my computer to remind me to go to the gym every day, but it's yeah. like, it's so easy to just kind of delete that if I feel like, oh no, I absolutely don't have time. But yet I know that when I go to the gym and I come back, I've got so much energy and I've got so much focus and I yeah. just get so much done. Yeah, well, definitely. I think sometimes the times when you're busiest or you think you're too tired, are the times you actually most need those things yes. because they will give you that lift and help you to refocus and get things back into perspective. Mm -hmm. And some of my best ideas, or well, I think they were good ideas at the time, <laughs> <laughs> some of my best ideas have been when I've been out for a run or I'm like stretching after a workout or, you know, I've taken a break to have a meal and I'm focus, concentrating on it and not doing lots of other things at the same time as eating. Mm -hmm. Then something will come to me and I'll be like, 
oh, look, I can do that, you know, that, you know, and it's because I've taken the time for myself. And, you know, I mean, the yogis have known it for thousands of years that your your body and mind are connected, you know, and your body and your, your, you know, your spirit, your spiritual essence are really connected as well. Um, and so it helps you to be authentic to yourself too, I believe. Yeah, I, I think, and I think it's also important what you said about that, the connection, because when you're taking time out for yourself, whether it's having a meal, a quiet meal away from your computer, or you're at the gym, or you're stretching, or you're meditating, that's, mm. it's time where you're focusing on your body, and you're kind of going yeah. into yourself, and that helps you connect with those brilliant ideas that you can have for your business. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it helps you to be more creative for those ideas, and also because it does energize you and help you you know, to focus and concentrate. And there's been lots of research that shows how it helps you to f sort of focus and concentrate. It means when you come back, you can actually, you're more able to apply those ideas um, and to put them into action. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research that does show that actually people who exercise regularly and or are working towards some kind of fitness or health goal, they also tend to be more successful at, doing the same in other areas of their life, whether mm. it's business or study or, you know, an office job or, or even relationships, you know. Um, and actually, they showed that people who take time for those things, they don't actually, it, it doesn't t detract from the other areas of their life. Um, so it, not in the way we think it does, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so important. So how would you define a healthy lifestyle? I would define it as balanced and um, not balanced in the way some people define balance so it's like you know okay if you eat some greens you can eat loads of chocolate and that's <laughs> <laughs> as lovely as that would be I'm a big chocolate fan it's about almost redefining what balance means to you so you know a healthy lifestyle it's a combination of the exercise so moving and moving quite vigorously as well so I you know having some kind of movement every day mm. and whether it's half an hour that's broken up through the day or like a, a full hour at the gym or run um some movement every day because our bodies are made to move they're not made to sit mm. still <laughs> and a lot of the both physical and psychological or you know mental problems that we've been found to have it have been really linked to sedentary lifestyles mm. And with most of us sitting at a desk, especially if you've got an online business, yes. you know, um, and you're, you're sitting at your computer all day, um, you know, we don't even go out for meetings a lot of the time because we do things by Skype, you know. <laughs> um, and so actually getting up and moving is a really important part of a healthy lifestyle. And then, of course, you've got the nutrition side of things. And for me, it's not about restricting yourself and saying, I can't have this, I can't have that. Because I know I'm, I'm a stubborn girl, and um, if you tell me I can't have something, I want it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's about um, making, you know, those things we know are good for us, our greens, our whole foods, keeping it as natural as possible, and making that business as usual. So eating those things isn't a weird thing to do. It's just <laughs> what we do automatically, you know? It's the rule rather than the exception. Mm. You know, if you focus on eating as natural as possible, so eating foods as close to their original form as possible, so not being processed, you know, not with something in a packet with hundreds of different ingredients, some of them can't <laughs> pronounce and you have no idea what they are, um, you know, that generally leads you to a healthier lifestyle, um, and which in turn means moving away from things like sugar and bread and you know, if you focus on being natural and as close to its original form, then it helps you to naturally move away from eating those things mm -hmm. um, and breaking those habits. Um, and then the other side of thing is taking the rest when you need it, giving yourself a break, um, being kind to yourself. You know, this week I've been absolutely shattered, I will confess. And there have been a, a morning where I was like, okay, I need the sleep more than I need the gym. And that was okay, you know? Mm -hmm. Every now and then, you know, even top athletes do it. They're not going full pelt with their training all the time. They have, you know, peak activity and then mm -hmm. they have those active recovery periods. And, you know, we need to look after ourselves in that way as well. 
and taking a bit of time for yourself, even if it's five minutes of quiet time, whether you want to call that meditation or just sitting still, you know, <laughs> cup of tea, um, so that you can just be for a short while. You know, we're human beings, not human doings, but we definitely focus more on the doing than yes, the being do. sometimes. And, but that being helps you to do more. If that makes any sense. It, it does. <laughs> and I think it's important that you focus on the downtime and the resting time as well. That's such yeah. an important part of self-care and of just being healthy. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And I think we forget it. It's like we feel, you know, when people start uh, some kind of healthy lifestyle plan or they want to try and lose weight or something or make their New Year's resolution, um, it's always about, okay, what have I got to do? I've got to do all this exercise. I've got to eat these foods. I've got to go shopping. I've got to, you know, I've got to, got to, got to, got to. And then it's like, okay, what actually can I stop doing? <laughs> And, you know, how can I pull back so that, you know, you've got the energy? Because if you just exhaust yourself, it affects all your hormone, hormones, including the ones that affect your appetite, your sense of well-being, your general feeling of happiness. And when those go out of balance, you know, um, it's almost impossible to maintain the good work you've started. So, yeah, it's having a balance of doing and the being Hmm. It's definitely important. I agree. That's it's so important. It's so easy to forget. Yeah. So you've got this manifesto on your website. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's I don't know. I think it's probably becoming a bit of a cliche to have a manifesto <laughs> on your website, but I just felt like I needed something to anchor me and also my clients and just see what what it's what the kind of whole picture is all about and what being a female warrior system mm. oh sorry being a female warrior is all about you know um it's not about learning to be aggressive learning to be like a man you know anything like that it's about being I don't if you could see me as soon as I said female warrior I sat up straight and <laughs> <laughs> um you know it it's about being confident in yourself happy with yourself at peace with yourself and in touch with your values and what's really important to you. And that is so much easier if you're physically fit, if you're physically looking after yourself. Because that being physically energised contributes to how emotionally connected you are. You know, you can be more emotionally mature, make decisions more easily, you know, whether it's decisions about, yep, okay, I've dated this guy, and yeah, he'd be a good catch, or not, you know, or whether it's decisions in your business. Um, It helps you become more mentally focused, so you can concentrate for longer and produce better quality work because you've got more mental clarity. Mm -hmm. And it helps you to become more spiritually aligned because if you physically feel fitter and lighter, you can more easily listen to your intuition and connect with that and operate in your business in line with your true values and your true self. So, you know, it's, I've probably gone completely off, off question, off topic. No, that's absolutely (laughs) fine. It's all good stuff. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So the the manifesto really was about bringing those together. And I literally, I sat down, I had a few quiet moments and then I was like, right, this is what I believe. And it all came out with a little bit of editing afterwards. And I was just like, and every time I read that, I think, yeah, that, that is why I'm doing this, that is what I want, and that is what I want for my clients. And I love it because it just really, really clearly states who you are and what you're about, and it helps people decide whether or not they resonate with you, and if you're the right person to work with them or not. Exactly, exactly, and even if one thing in there resonates, mm. then that's amazing. If it doesn't resonate with them, and they think, no, this isn't the person for me, she's a complete loon, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, then people need to know that at the beginning because I think there are so many people out there providing support in different ways so it helps you to make the decision if there's a one clear message mm. that says okay this is what that person is all about it helps the other person your potential client to then connect with you so I'm hoping that's what the manifesto does yeah and, and I think that's one of the most important things about your website you just mm. you really need to speak clearly about who you are so that your person who's reading your website can decide whether or not they connect with you. Yes, definitely. And I think, for me, the blog really, having a blog really yes. helps. Um, every week I, up, I 
do a new blog article and the people on my list get a link to that article so they can keep up with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it helps you, it not only helps your clients to really get an idea of what you're about and potentially how you might be able to help them, um, but also it reconnects you with what you're doing and, and why you're doing it. And no matter what's happening in my business, I know that someone is going to read that article somewhere and I usually get a little response whether it's by email or by a comment you know mm -hmm. someone's mm -hmm. going to read that article and even if they take, one person takes one thing from that article and they think oh that makes me feel so much better or yeah I believe I can do this you know it's so good to know that it's so good to know that yes and it's so good to stay in, in connection with people that are that are really resonating with your work and, and yeah. with your writing I mean, this is something that um, when I first started my business, you know, if someone says, said no, they didn't want to work with me, I would be like, oh, what's wrong with me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, not everyone who wants to work with you or resonates with your message is necessarily ready to buy from you now. Exactly. Or to, to actually be ready to do the work and make it work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so the fact I can be helping those people while they're in that decision-making process, whether they end up working with me or not, feels really good so it's um yeah it's about that communication developing that um that trust yeah i agree so what would you say are your top tips for women in business who want to stay fit okay well i think my first tip is about taking responsibility for your fitness i mean we all make excuses but we often don't recognize them as excuses um and so Likewise, that can cause procrastination in your business. It can also cause pro procrastination in your, bit, in your body, in your fitness routine. So I think the first step is to start recognizing when you're making an excuse, which I know sounds harsh, but <laughs> when you're making an excuse, and then take responsibility and think, okay, what if that wasn't the case? What could I do? Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, always what can I do. Sometimes the first step is, all right, I just need to go out for a run if you're able to run. Sometimes the first step is, okay, I need to pull back, I need to stop for half an hour and just be, be still so that I can re you haven't got all the other stuff cluttering up your head. Um, the other thing I would say is see to change your view of the things you need to do as getting fit and healthy. You're in investing in yourself as an investment in your business. So that's not just an investment of money, but it's an investment of time. And, you know, I recognize that. But you need to, yeah, see it as an investment in your business. It's an essential business activity. So, you know, and I'm talking here about the mindset sort of side of things. And that thing of what I talked earlier about most of us put ourselves at the bottom of our to-do list is putting yourself at the top of your to-do list mm. and planning in those workouts first almost, planning in those meals. You know, if they need to move, if one day it doesn't happen, that's okay. But if those things are in the diary and you plan other things around them, it makes it so much easier to then actually do it. Instead of just sort of skipping them, uh, you know, treat yourself as if you're your biggest client. You're, if, you, if your client was paying you a million pounds or a million dollars, you would, you know, you'd probably drop everything for them. Well, for <laughs> reason, obviously. <laughs> and, you know, but you are your business. You are your biggest asset. You are your best client. You know, if there's no you, there's no business. So mm -hmm. it's recognizing that and, and getting in line with that. In terms of practical tips, I would say find a way to move every day. Half an hour if you can as a minimum, even if it's broken up through the day. you know, And at least three times a week, make that quite vigorous. So you're getting sweaty, you're getting, you know, you're actually getting a little bit outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that when I do that on a regular basis, I find it easier to go out of my comfort zone for my business as well. Mm -hmm. My confidence, I know I can do something that's not necessarily comfortable for me but is good for me and so I can do something that's not necessarily comfortable for me but good for my business it's, it's a massive crossover it's amazing and another tip is get enough sleep <laughs> <laughs> get enough sleep because it affects everything else you can do whether it's in line with in relation to your fitness in relation to your business or in relation to like your family and relationships, getting those eight hours really makes a difference or as close to as you can. Mm -hmm. Very, awesome. very important. Mm, definitely. Those are excellent tips. So why don't you share with us how other women in business can benefit from working with you and how they can get started with your mentoring program? Uh, well, in terms of benefit, benefiting from working with me, uh, 
my programs are all about helping you to recognize that your business starts with you and help you to connect with that. All of my programs involve creating an actual plan that helps you to connect, firstly connect your fitness with your purpose and your business and help you to do it in a way that fits with your business and gets you in the right mindset to believe that you can, that you can have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. There's a combination of practical guidance around exercise and food as well as motivation and accountability. So having that regular contact with me or with my online program um, really helps you just to keep going, remind you what your goal is, remind you what you're trying to do, um, and also gives you that bit of accountability. Because when you know someone's checking in on you, it's like when I've had a business coach, I know that accountability means I'm definitely more likely to <laughs> get the job done. Yes. Yeah, and it's about, it helps, I help you to give yourself permission to take care of yourself, which then in turn allows you to take care of business and help you to overcome those obstacles as they arise. So it's particularly in my longer um, mentoring program, my 10 week program. It's designed, it's that length because it's, you establish the habits in the first sort of four weeks and then it goes on for long enough for you to make those new behavior, behaviors actual habits. But you're supported as you go through the obstacles. So when something comes up, whether it's Christmas or a party or a really stressful time with the business, you can see how you react. And I'm there to say, okay, well, let's see if we can find a different way for you to respond to this situation so that you can still look after yourself and then it helps you to cope with those situations better so get through the obstacles and what was the second part to your question I think it was how, how they can get started working with your mentoring program. I like what you just said about how um, you have an online program, which I think is really important. A lot of people, f I think, assume that they need to have kind of a physical presence with their you know, personal trainer or fitness yeah. mentor or something, but you've got an online program. Yeah, and I, I realized that you know, being with me as a mentor or a personal trainer isn't necessarily right for everyone. Mm. So that online program just makes it accessible. It's a 30-day program. And it helps you to incorporate those healthy lifestyle changes one week at a time. So each week you're focused on a different element, whether it's you know, breakfast and 10 minutes of exercise. And then it goes on to incorporate the other meals and building that exercise routine week by week, as well as those lifestyle elements like the rest and the meditation. That 30 day program is designed to get you through that bit where you're establishing the behavior. So by the end of that, you create your own plan with a bit of guidance through the online content. Um, and each day you get a little email that gives you that little bit of motivation because it is a daily thing. Was it Zig Ziglar that said? Um, but yeah, so you get a bit of daily motivation as well as weekly guidance on the changes you can make. Um, and there is also an option to do that program with some mentoring. So if you want just, you know, 30 day glass, but have a bit of accountability in there, there is also an option for that. Um, but I would say the starting point is to go to my website and um, becomeafemalewarrior.com mm -hmm. and to sign up for the free seven days, little mini seven day program where each day you just get a bit of inspiration and motivation, which really is to set you up for making those healthy lifestyle training changes sorry, so that you get into the right mindset before you even start doing the practical elements really. Um, and along with that, you get a copy of your own copy of the manifesto, which includes additional elements in terms of making lifestyle changes. So um, it's a document that you can use as a, a guideline. And you also get weekly Monday motivation emails, which link directly to my blog. So you'll get the benefit of that ongoing motivation and knowledge. Oh, excellent. One last question. Do you have any women business mentors? Are there any women in business who inspire you? In the past, I found it difficult to answer this question because mm. it's not always the same person. Mm -hmm. Who inspires and motivates me is very different depending on what my needs are at the time. So in the past, there's been very specific. Um, so, for example, Yvette Nevercla is a business coach that specializes in helping uh, fitness professionals to create a business they love and that they can actually maintain rather than ending up leaving the industry and um, so she was an inspiration for a long time and um, in terms of people who've inspired me to make really practical changes in my business there's been um, Julie Hall of Women Unlimited mm -hmm. and Catherine Watkins selling from the heart I've done 
programs and really enjoyed them. I enjoy the sort of blogs and videos of some of the American business mentors like Murray Folio and Gabrielle Bernstein, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, find a little bit of that practical element with a bit of the spiritual, which I really like. Mm. And also writers like Marianne Williamson, mm -hmm. you know, people like that who, you know, they really encourage you to consider the spiritual side of things, really, and to do things in line with your, your authentic self um, so that you can feel, fulfill your purpose. Um, and always I try and look at people and say, OK, what can I learn from this person? And sometimes that's recognised if you see someone and something about them annoys you, sometimes they've got something to teach you. Cause it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes um, the people who've annoyed me have been quite inspirational, <laughs> which is quite funny. Yeah, so, yeah, but it, but I've come to accept that, okay, I don't always have one person that that is my uber inspiration, if you like. Yeah. Uh, I have different needs, whether it's spiritually, whether it's practically in my business, or whether it's in relation to the fitness side of things. You know, I come across p the right people at the right time, mm. and inspiration and motivation, it's really nice. Mm, it's lovely. <laughs> well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap things up? No, I think it's just to say thank you so much for for having me on the podcast. I've really enjoyed it. And if anyone does want to get in touch, you can get in touch through my website, becomeafemalewarrior.com. Yeah, it would be great to hear from anyone. I love connecting with other women in business um, because we've all got something to learn from each other. So. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very, very much for being our guest today. No worries. Thank you for having me, Holly. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed, at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.